my name is Heather Richmond. Welcome to the channel. I hope everyone is doing well and you guys are taking care of yourselves. So this topic um, regarding extraterrestrials is something that I've been uh, in pretty deep contemplation about uh, for quite some time. I've done a lot of research on this. Um, so I, fi I figured it was the appropriate time to go ahead and share um, some of the conclusions that I've drawn. Before I do that, I want to make sure to give uh, kind of my standard disclaimer that, you know, this information may not resonate with everyone who hears it. Um, however, having said that, uh, you know, your soul at a soul level, uh, you are able to discern what is, um, you know, what is resonant with you, what is your particular truth, and that's kind of what, uh, part of what we'll talk about in just a moment. Um, but I'm never here to give anyone their truth. Uh, I'm never trying to convince anyone of anything because I know, you know, my own truth and my own perspective, which is uh, continually evolving and in flux as well. Uh, I hope to simply serve as a, a reminder for your own consciousness, um, you know, to remember your infinite potential, essentially. So, um, this question, what are extraterrestrials? Uh, it's a little bit, of course, uh, convoluted. Uh, so it's going to take a, I'm going to review very briefly, um, a couple of the things that I've talked about previously, just because I can't necessarily jump right into it without, um, you know, making sure I give a good foundation. So pardon me if you've already heard me talk about some of this. Um, but I do look at everything from a quantum perspective. I look at everything from a oneness perspective. Um, and then from there, you know, I'm able to sort of, um, give additional, you know, points of view as well. So, um, having said that, let's go ahead and dive in. So if we begin with the assumption or the agreement that the nature of our physical reality on the physical planes um, is that of a, a quantum holographic matrix projection. Um, and this is a projection that our individual consciousness has, has and does create. So, you know, very often we, of course, hear many people speaking about the matrix. Um, from my perception, uh, the matrix is not simply existent in, um, in third dimensional earth planes of existence or that plane of existence. Um, once you progress into, um, once you ascend your consciousness into the higher planes, specifically here, we're going to look at 5D, um, then, you know, it still is a matrix projection. The word matrix in and of itself does not have, it, it's not negative. It's nothing nefarious. Um, it's only, you know, sort of the difference in its presentation in 3D and 5D. And I made a series of videos called Transitioning Out of the 3D Matrix. I think that was the series. Uh, so if you want more information about that, I'd encourage you to go back and look at those and kind of fill in any, you know, questions you might have after watching this video. So, or even before delving into it further. Um, so essentially, uh, 3D, we can look at that as being a digital consciousness. It's finite, it's binary, so we can think about this as being like the big, uh, you know, desktop computer, basically. Like, uh, I picture it in my mind as like one of those old, uh, you know, Apple Macintoshes or whatever, uh, you know, the big white hefty things from like the, you know, 90s. Um, and then 5D is quantum, 5D and above, you know, those planes of consciousness are quantum. But here we're just going to really uh, focus on more of the physical matter realities. So I'm just looking at really 5D here. 
Um, and this, we know that in the quantum field, infinite potentials exist, okay? Um, and that's really something that um, I feel like is part of my role um, to sort of remind people about, because I think so often in the spiritual community, we talk about, you know, timelines and we talk about, you know, collective events happening and, you know, we try to make predictions and all of that. Uh, one thing that I just would really encourage uh, anyone who's listening to think about is, um, and, and obviously it's not a, you know, a concept that you'll get immediately, but you will if you tune into that reality that all potentials exist. So um, whatever is true to you, and this goes against so much that we were taught on, you know, the 3D, um, the 3D earth plane, but what is, what is your truth is true, essentially. It's just, you know, you consciously decide to tune into that potential. So on the 3D earth plane, you know, we can look at this like a, a game, essentially, that we agreed to play because as a soul, being limitless and having no boundaries and being able to do what we want and all of that, um, obviously those are, are great experiences and it's, it's what we are, you know, looking to uh, experience more of. However, you know, if, if you have no limitations, um, then sort of the only, um, you know, uh, alternative to that for growth is to, is for your soul to then experience limitation, to experience what it's like to be finite. And so, of course, that has led us to, um, massive expansion as we no. And part of what is so um, interesting about this is that, you know, now those of us who are waking up are experiencing the contrast of that. And so that's what makes uh, the remembering of who you truly are so incredible because it's like, oh my gosh, how did I forget this, you know? And so it just truly does open up a, a whole new world. Um, my guess is that it, at some point that we, you know, will all choose to be, um, you know, if we, if we look at it from a linear perspective, we know, of course, everything is always happening at once. But if we look at it from a linear perspective, you know, we will probably all choose to be finite again because it's, you know, it's just a, it's part of growth and expansion. But in the, you know, in the meantime, we can definitely enjoy that uh, limitlessness first. And I think that's what we're all sort of waking up to and, and truly, um, you know, enjoying at this time. So what we call ascension, it's not an event, it's not one specific thing. It's an ongoing process. Truly, we've been ascending of, you know, our entire incarnation. It's just that at a certain point, we start ascending consciously. So, um, this and, and directing, um, you know, controlling the direction of our ascension process. I'm sorry, I see a typo there. I forgot my other quotation mark, but, um, pardon me on that. So, um, you know, that's an, it's an ongoing process and it's also an individual process. So my perception of the event is, and this is a little bit tangential, but basically my perception is that um, whatever quote unquote event that you want to tune into, that's sort of a signifier for your consciousness to, um, you know, give you further confirmation that you have indeed ascended. So, you know, you can choose to tune into the event or an event. You can choose to create an event um, or you can choose not to. You know, it, it may not necessarily be, you know, in terms of just a, a, a one-time 
thing, it may not be something that everyone tunes into. So when indeed this process does become more conscious and we do begin to um, control the direction of our ascension process, here's what unfolds. Essentially, we remember our infinite nature. You know, we were designed to, to be activated at a certain time. Um, and we understand, we come to know that all potentials are available to us. We can access anything. And so then, you know, we proceed to collapse the 3D Earth reality. And we can say that we're sort of logging out of the game. Um, from my perception, from my perspective, I don't view it as like escaping the matrix or anything like that because that implies rejection of something. Um, but it's more like we're just sort of, you know, we're just choosing to um, end this particular reality, end this particular, you know, that particular game, basically. So it's not like, you know, it's not creating a spirit of resistance in that way. So then, um, as we, you know, endeavor upon that process of logging out, and that's, you know, if you're tuned into the frequency of these messages, then that's what you're seeing playing out on a, a grander scale, you know, on, on the planet. Um, so then we can choose consciously to place our awareness in other planes of existence. And again, that's out of the quantum field. So um, we will perceive these things as taking time, quote unquote, because our, our physical body is still sort of encumbered by time. However, um, and there's sort of like this time, remaining time lag. However, um, in reality, ascension, um, you know, can be completely, or I should say placing your, uh, changing where your awareness lies can be completely instantaneous in theory. Um, so we, you know, from this perception, from this frequency, we sort of look at two big, uh, forks or paths in the road, in, the, in this fork in the road. So one of those paths leads to new, what we call New Earth, okay? And that's where we, you know, have this experience of closing down 3D Earth, transition, helping everybody transition into the New Earth, and, you know, creating all of these new things based on a more familiar reality. Um, and, you know, that may not be what everybody chooses, uh, you know, some people may choose to directly ascend their consciousness in, in a more um, galactic way. And so really that's what I'm going to talk about here, what we mean when we say galactic, what we mean when we say extraterrestrial. So I look at uh, New Earth as being sort of you know, these are the more like boots on the ground people who are, you know, having this experience where they are trying to wake up humanity and they're trying to help humanity, um, you know, usher in this new era and all of that. Um, for me personally, I, I feel like at this point I'm sort of more, um, I look at myself as maybe kind of a, a, a welcomer, um, you know, on the, the quote unquote other side Um so both of these paths are really, um, the, you know, these are still holographic projections. They're still matrix realities. And so I've had, you know, some people who react negatively to that. I understand it because I think, you know, in many people's, from many people's point of view, points of view, they look at it as, you know, we're going to escape the matrix and there's no more matrix and, you know, we have this terrible connotation of it. But um, in the higher planes, we have an understanding that reality in, in those, you know, planes of awareness, while it, yes, it is still a holographic projection that allows us to have a quote unquote physical experience, it is now it now becomes a projection that we create 
And so um, when we were existing in 3D, that reality was created for us. We can look at it as like kind of fitting in, uh, you know, in, into a template. And if we want to go, if we want to look at that from a deeper level, even, you know, really and truly that template, even what was created for us was of our soul's design. It was our agreement that we made, you know, again, part of the game for expansion. And I know, you know, that that term, the game, um, that hits some people the wrong way, but <clears throat> just because it's a game doesn't mean it, you know, it, obviously it feels important at the time while we're immersed in it. And that's by design. So, this is the upgrade that we are referring to. You know, it's going from a digital consciousness where we're very, very limited to a quantum consciousness where we know that infinite potentials exist. So um, part of what was uncovered in Dolores Cannon's work, uh, she talks about how all the planes of existence already exist. You know, we're, we're not... Um, when we say that we're creating the new earth, um, what we mean is we're creating the new earth for us individually. Because again, ascension is an individual process. These planes of existence, the higher planes, 5D, it's already available to you at any time after you wake up. So, you know, when people talk about like, oh, we're waiting on, you know, whomever to come and... Um, assist us or rescue us or any of that, um, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> it's fine. It's, you know, it's still, they are still playing out that aspect of the game to have that experience. So there's no judgment involved. Um, you know, it's maybe some people are trying to uh, directly deceive other people, uh, but Again, it's all part of the greater game. It's all part of the greater experience. So if we assume that as truth going further, then we understand that we, our consciousness, um, and its various aspects already exist in all of those planes of awareness. So, um, you know, this is what we mean when we say we are infinite beings. That's what infinity means. So, and that we, you know, it's simply a matter of where we choose to place our awareness. And as we sort of transcend into the higher planes, we become aware that we can place our awareness, or we uh, understand that we can place our awareness in multiple planes of reality. And I'm sure, you know, at a certain point, you that's, you know, I guess that's oneness or singularity is when we can uh, place our awareness in all realities, essentially. So given all of that, what we call ETs are simply souls who have already taken this upgrade in consciousness, okay? So um, we know that, again, all the planes already exist, um, but to get there, physical in a uh, what we would call a physical matter reality our being the atoms of our being have to vibrate at a physically faster rate and that allows us to tune into the higher frequencies of reality and so at that point um, we can perceive 3D, we can perceive what we've already experienced and we can perceive the higher planes. However, what the veil is, um, is that, you know, 3D cannot perceive the higher planes. So, um, you know, what we call ETs exist etherically. Um, the, you know, how we define, you know, what the planets are. If we're, again, looking at this from a, a holographic universe standpoint, um, in theory, all of the planets already exist where I equate planets as being planes of existence. So again, all of these exist. All is mind, okay? There's no, like, getting in a spaceship and, um, 
going to another planet or if there is it's just it, it is in your mind and um, the ships that are referred to are the physical body um, that's the physical body the you know paired with uh, the etheric body the etheric double basically the, those two working in tandem so what we call the Merkaba um, so, you know, again, when we say like out in space, for instance, um, what we mean is the anti-matter reality. And I'm, I do hope to go into this more in depth soon, um, particularly as it relates to CERN as well. I think that that's a big clue. I haven't put it all together yet, but I think that that um, scenario provides us a lot of insight on uh, you know, what the material plane is versus, um, you know, antimatter. So we might also refer to this as the reciprocal universe. So um, we will see a manifestation physically. And again, quote unquote, there is no, you know, there is no physical matter, basically. But for the purposes of this, we will perceive physically in our physical reality whatever consciousness we are tuning into on the inside so that's why it's so critical for ascension to go inward because you have to decide you don't have to you can do whatever you want but like if you want to um you know if your soul is ready to ascend you will come to a, you know, go through a process where you decide, okay, do I want to align with Pleiadian consciousness? Do I want to align with, uh, you know, Andromedan consciousness? Do I want to align with both of them and more, you know, whatever? Do I want to be part of the new earth? And that's a decision that you and your soul, your etheric body, um, I'm coming into a lot more information about what the etheric body really is. Um, you can look at it as your um, your twin flame, basically, that exists in, in the ether, um, in the antimatter universe, perhaps you can say. So that's a decision that, you know, you make together, basically, um, because you're working at that point as one unit. Um, so I... Um, I know that this information is a little bit convoluted and it's, um, you know, it's not, it, it's a little bit challenging to explain it as well, but I hope I articulated it uh, clearly and cohesively. Again, this is just my own perspective, won't resonate with everyone perfectly fine. Um, if you guys have any questions, I really like it when, you know, people ask questions because that, it truly does help me to you know, further, you know, to achieve a deeper understanding. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to, to reach out either in the comments or um, via email or, or whatever. Um, I will also briefly note that I do, um, I did just very recently launch a Patreon page because I, I really am not a fan of, you know, traditional social media. Um, I've, tuned out of that basically and so uh, patreon seems to be a place where I can disseminate like longer written messages uh, information that comes through I have a lot of information that I've compiled over the past several months and just uh, you know it within the confines of time uh, I you know I can't make all of those videos like I would literally have to be making a video you know every single day if not more to get all that information out there so it's easier for me to um, disseminate it in you know via something like patreon and so so far I just have the the one tier at two dollars a month uh, posted if I get enough people on board and we can kind of form a community then I hope to add uh, videos and maybe you know live streams and things like that in in the future so we'll see so anyway just a, a small uh, plug plug there <laughs> all right so thank you so much for listening